I think we're ready to start. Ready to start? Yeah. All right, so uh, like I said, this is a, a session about migrating from 5 to 6. Uh, we're going to go through most of the examples. Um, I work at Urban Insight, and so does Pam. Um, and we're going to be leading the session. And uh, like I said, we have a lot of existing clients on 5, and we've slowly and painfully been migrating them to Drupal 6. Um, it's something, if you have a large 5 site, it's not necessarily easy to do. Um, and depending upon how you set up your Drupal 5 site, um, it's something that can be a huge challenge. Um, so between running through it myself and then Pam running through it, um, we kind of list a process, you know, a nice little checklist of things that you guys can incorporate in your workflow that might help you when you upgrade. Um, so definitely learn from our mistakes. You know, I've had to do things the hard way. I think I spent a whole two days trying to figure out why the module wouldn't upgrade. Um, and, and I learned some pretty cool lessons. So um, we're just going to talk about that. So I guess before you even start your upgrade process, right, you have to do your research. You have to figure out on your site what, like, what do you do on your Drupal 5 site? What modules are you using? And then obviously the, the question you ask yourself is, are those modules ported to Drupal 6? And if they're not, um, do you need that functionality from, you know, your upgrade? Is that, is that module mission critical? And if it is, you have to rethink about how you implemented that. Um, you implement it now. Um, could you do something better? Could you re-architect? Do you need this module? Just things, basic optimization, and, and just things you need to think about um, prior to starting this whole process, right? If your whole site um, depended on views and views wasn't available, which it is, um, you'd have to rethink, right? You can't really upgrade. So definitely uh, a huge thing to consider. Um, oh, and we're going to be making the slides available. If you go to the session details, we'll have a link there. Um, so we'll have that up so you can have this workflow that yeah. we're starting, that we're talking about. So, but that's pretty much step, before you even get started, uh, assess what your site does and see if there's modules that, that solve those problems and needs. And if there's an upgrade path, um, some modules from five to six tell you that, you know, the upgrade path is not, not there. I, I mean, it, it'll upgrade, but like with views, you can't, you have to rebuild some views manually. So, so step one, obviously create a backup of your site files and your database. Um, this is kind of a no-brainer. Um, and make sure that you have functioning data in your, uh, for your dumps, like, you know, make sure it's the current version off the server, um, you know, not something that you're working on in development locally. Make sure that there's information in your database. Um, I can't tell you how many times I've, you know, just peaked. You know, I, I did a database, or a dump, a lot of work. Um, I, I, I was going to suggest the screen capture is being captured off the laptop, and the microphone is too. Stand behind the podium so that you're capturing your voice on the on the caption. All right, great. You understand what? Yep. Mm -hmm. Sure. So where, where was it? Uh, so yeah, if you do a database dump, make sure that there's information in the dump. Um, I think Pam's going to walk through. Uh, you know, we're going to just dump this database just to show you how. If for some reason you're on a hosting provider that has a limit and you know your database is huge, you can't export, you can always export in chunks, you can export you know, a handful of tables. You don't necessarily need the watchdog table, um, but you know, yeah, yeah, but you know, it's something that's nice to have. So if you have access to it, I would just do a dump of everything. But if you if you don't, if you have those limits on your hosting provider, then you know, just you know, break it up so you're not hitting those limits. Right. They're pretty standard. And then, you know, taking the, you know, FTP into the site and, and taking all the files off the server. All right, so putting your site in maintenance mode. This is pretty, pretty much an upgrade practice that, you know, I'm sure that if you guys upgrade Drupal uh, modules or Drupal core that you guys do. Um, something that's handy if your site's, if you're going to be bringing the site down, if your site's a user-generated site, um, using uh, Apache to direct to an uh, offline page. Um, for you know a day or two, I've seen this. Uh, some Drupal sites do, right? Because right now, when you if you walk through the Drupal five upgrade to six, um, you will throw errors when people are visiting your site, and it just might be easier for you if you have access to Apache or you have a system admin guy who can set up something where Apache just redirects to an HTML file, and that way you can just upgrade the whole process, and you don't have to worry about. People are trying to access your site, you can just put, you know, site is offline, we're, we're doing a major upgrade, um, check back in like a day or two. Um, but the, the reason that we kind of make that optional 
um, is because, let's say you're running on GoDaddy, GoDaddy won't let you access you know, the uh, Apache server and, and do something like that. Right? They pretty much won't do anything for you. So you really need to have control um, of your server to do something like that, to redirect um, to like a maintenance offline HTML page. So um, just something to consider. So when you put your site on uh, maintenance mode, um, take a look at the log files. Pam's gonna show you logs. This is something that I think a lot of people don't do enough of. Your logs tell you the health of Drupal. So if you're not checking these beforehand, and let's say you have a serious problem with the way a module was implemented currently and you try and upgrade that, you're just in included another set of variables or, or things that could go wrong before you even upgrade it. So check your um, log files, make sure that you're not throwing errors, make sure something's not wrong um, before you start. We have, right, and see. we have some theme issues, but um, it's nothing serious. If you had a bunch of PHP errors, if you can filter by uh, PHP errors. See if you have anything. Uh, we have a mail two function. I think that's from when we installed the site. Um, so really everything seems to be running healthy. Um, there's nothing, no PHP errors on the site. All right, um, do you have anything to add? No, All right. I don't know. Cool. Um, like I said, we'll make this checklist available to everyone, but uh, we're just kind of running off things that we do. Um, so, all right, so along with the un, um, checking the logs, go to the status report, and you want to make sure that you're upgraded to all the newest versions of the Drupal 5. So, like, if you're running Drupal 5.9, um, let's go ahead and uh, check my new yeah, right I'm sure you guys are all familiar, and so we're, we're all, all up to date. But if you weren't, you'd want to consider here, you, most times when, if you look in the contributed modules, the upgrade.txt uh, upgrade or the readme, they're gonna tell you that upgrade to the most recent version before you jump uh, full version numbers. If you're on Drupal 5 and you have the update, uh, update status module, disable it, because update status is now in a, a Drupal core, Drupal 6 core. So if you have that on, it's a potential um, it cause issues potentially for when you upgrade to 6. So what you need to do is you need to um, disable it. And delete the files from you know, your, your site. And you have to actually uninstall it from, um, I think if, oh. you, if you uninstall it from the, right. you uninstall the module wipe all the tables because when you install Drupal, uh, Drupal 6, it's going to try and um, create those um, update tables. So then, yeah, and then once you have un uninstalled it there, just dump the, uh, dump the site files. All right. All right, so now you can take a look at your contributed modules and hopefully you did the research to make sure that you had Drupal 6 versions of all these, or if you didn't need a module, you, you can go without its functionality. Um, I know for admin menu, there's a Drupal 6 version, and CCK, there's a Drupal 6 version. Um, can you show them down? Oh, yeah. Um, and that's Drupal core. Um, so now, you know, we have all the versions, so we're good to go, we're ready to upgrade. We, uh, all our um, modules we have that we're running have Drupal 6 equivalents. So we're gonna go ahead and, and turn them off. Because we don't, like I said, want to introduce another variable. We want to um, upgrade Drupal core first and then we'll handle the, the modules. And like I said, this can be a lengthy process um, and you might want to consider doing, doing this definitely on a local machine. Um, I, I wouldn't suggest doing it on a production server, but I've done it. Um, it took me about three hours. I was lucky that I didn't run into that many problems, but it's something that can be done quickly. Um, but you kind of have to plan ahead, and that's kind of why I mentioned that in the beginning. Definitely plan, plan, plan um, for something like this. All right, so we turn off all our contributed modules. Um, we're gonna go ahead and make note of what we have enabled. Um, if you have a bunch of optional, core optional modules enabled, um, you know, we're disabling them now, but you need to know which modules <laughs> have your functionality, right? If you turn them off and then, you know, your forum's not working and you say, oh, I upgraded, to Drupal 6, my form's not working, you know, did you turn it on? Um, so definitely make note of what modules you have enabled. Um, 
All right, so now you have all, um, you're pretty much running, you're trying to get Drupal as vanilla as possible, right? You disabled the um, uh, contributed modules, um, you disabled some core um, optional modules. Now you want to, your theme, you want to turn that off. You want to turn off uh, a custom theme. Because if you have, you know, custom logic in your, in your template.php or you have a, a function, I think you mentioned earlier about, you know, a function that's not used now, it'll kill the site. And, and it's hard for you to tell, you know, where that happened. Is it a module? Is it a part of the upgrade that killed it? Is it my custom theme? So in the debugging process, it's just easier just turn off, um, use a core theme or use an admin theme. Um, that way you're kind of working from, you know, level zero. I use Garland um, just because I know that Garland works on Drupal 5 and 6, so this shouldn't be an issue. Um, so we definitely set an admin theme, turn off a, a custom theme for sure. Um, something else that I ran into recently is I forgot to turn off caching on my Drupal 5 site and I upgraded to Drupal 6 and it threw a ton of errors. And I had to dive through the code and, and see what, what was being generated. It had to do with uh, a function call going to the old um, Drupal 5 uh, cache tables. I think there was, what, there was five cache tables. There were six, and then now there's seven in Drupal 6. Yeah. So, so just what, the system changed. So. Yeah. The whole system for, for caching changed between five and six. Um, like Pam said, there was five or six tables, and now there's seven. So something in that function call didn't like. Um, it was accessing something that was either gone or was missing, um, and it was killing my site. So if you have caching turned on, um, which know you know, you're running Drupal 5, um, it's under performance settings, you should go ahead and turn it off. So disable that, uh, you know, disable all your caching, you know. Uh, all right. It's all the same. And make sure, you know, definitely make sure that you know, clear your cache if you're worried that you might even be running some, some cache version of something. So do that. Uh, All right, so now we get to the meat and potatoes. All right, so now we're gonna delete everything um, in our Drupal 5 site, except for our sites folder, which has um, you know, our module information, our settings inf our information, uh, our custom theme, um, and any uh, you know, defined, if you defined uh, your files directory as slash files, you wanna keep that folder, right? Because it has all your pictures and PDFs or any file uploads from users. Um, and that can vary from site to site, but Besides those two uh, folders, we want to go ahead and delete everything. All right. And then we go, if, if you haven't grabbed the latest version of uh, Drupal, um, go to Drupal.org and download uh, uh, the latest version of Drupal 6. I think Pam already has all those files prepared. Um, you don't want to copy over the sites folder. Um, you can also do some things like, you know, um, get rid of the change log or or the install.php because you don't really need that folder, but that's optional too. I mean, if you just easy for you, you can copy the whole file uh, and port it over um, and deal with the cleanup later. Um, and I don't know if I, if you were attended any of my other sessions, but uh, or my other session about Drupal security and don't leave the change log on your production server. Um, if you someone knows about that file, they can look at it. Um, they see what version of Drupal you're running, um, and it's a potential roadmap for vulnerabilities. Right? If you're running Drupal. Uh, 611, and you, um, the chain, the current version is 613. Then there's you know cross-site scripting hacks that are available that your site could be potentially vulnerable to. So don't have that file on there. Just a general security process. And just uh, and, and I personally just don't like all that clutter on my server. So um, I'll delete like some of the other text files, the maintainers, and, and all that stuff that I don't need. Um, I'll just go ahead and get rid of it. Okay. All right, so once you uh, copy the new um, files over, um, you gotta run the update.php script. Um, and that's pretty standard if you guys are used to upgrading modules. Um, you gotta run that script every time you upgrade a module. Um, and you'll see we have upgrade, we're gonna go ahead and run it. This is hopefully, we'll cross our fingers, hope everything goes well. Uh, and there we go, it, it ran through a ton of stuff. Um, you can see that Drupal from five to six has significantly changed the table structure um, and, and other different um, attributes to the <laughs> now, I'm not a big developer. I, I don't do a lot of SEAL stuff, but I can definitely know that that's, that's a big change, right? Um, so uh, we didn't see any errors, so that's good. So now we're gonna proceed. Um, we're gonna open up um, the admin page and, and let's just see if uh, we can get it working. All right, so we're gonna go to the, 
um, status or available updates to just see if it, if it did take, if we are, you know, what version of people are running. Like I said, um, check these logs. Oh. Um, logging? You can check the logging piece. Oh. Logging piece. Don't worry. Oh. Sorry. And, and you see, we have something still missing with our theme, but if we filter by PHP errors, I don't think we're having any errors. So this is good. Um, it, if something went wrong in your upgrade and you saw those errors, um, and you filter here by PHP, yeah. uh, you could take a look and see maybe there's something that you, uh, if you had core um, and something's not kosher or it, if there's something custom that's not working, um, it would probably show up here. Like I said, all we have is this mail function that failed when we installed uh, Drupal 5. Um, all right, so now we've upgraded. Everything seems to be working with the logs. Uh, if you want to go to the status, uh, status update just to make sure. Status and now you see we're running Drupal 6.3. All right, so now this is kind of uh, square one. All right, so now we have Drupal 6 running core. It's pretty much vanilla. Um, we go back into the modules and we start turning on um, our optional modules. And if we need to, we rerun the, the upgrade.php uh, or update.php. Um, because as you turn on, and, and you'll notice when we come in here that, that the versions of 5 we have aren't compatible. Like I said, so depending upon how many contributed modules you have, this upgrade can be really quick. Um, I think if you look online and you search for like upgrading Drupal 5 to 6, you'll, you'll see a screencast. The guy runs through it. He's like, oh, yeah, you can do this in place. He upgrades two modules. Now, it's, it's a nice demo, but it's not really functional, right? Like you guys, you know, if you're Drupal 5, there's tons of modules. You know, I don't even know how many modules you could be running potentially. Um, so just things to think about when you bring your site down, if you do to do this upgrade, it could be days possibly. Um, if, if you don't have the time to commit or if something goes wrong. Um, so um, I think, Pam, did you? Um, um, no, talk about the themes thing. Themes. Yeah. OK. So um, wait, no, we're going to upgrade modules? Oh, yeah, yeah we're going to upgrade all right. modules. So all right, so now we're up and running. We have the Drupal optional core modules turned yeah. on. Let's run update.php just in case. Um, I always, there's no, there's no harm in running the update.php script again. So if you turned on new modules, um, Run it again and see maybe there's something we, we missed on the first time around. Uh, it doesn't look like it, but let's just run it anyway to make sure that um, everything's kosher. And like I said, it's not going to hurt anything if you run this script a bunch of times, and you'll see some modules require you running it several times, um, depending upon if you turn, you know, you turn on CCK, it'll ask you for an upgrade. If you turn on, you know, optional widgets or something along those lines, permission fields, um, you might have to run it again. We'll show that. We'll uh, show updating. So, so yeah. So now that we have core and the option, optional modules upgraded, let's upgrade uh, a big module, let's upgrade CCK. Okay. So same kind of process. Um, one thing you, you want to do, though, is you want to read if there's a uh, readme or uh, some kind of uh, upgrade.txt. Module developers, you know, they're great because um, they contribute back to community, but they don't always fall like a standard convention. So sometimes the upgrade.txt will have information. Sometimes it'll be in the readme. Um, sometimes it'll be in a handbook, so you might have to search around if you're upgrading from five to six. Um, definitely take a look and see if there's any information. Is there anything in this one? Um, mm, I don't. I don't think there's anything. No. Um, if you go to the views, um, <laughs> read me. Uh, there's a lovely little note about upgrading from five to six. We just want to show everyone just to give you a sense of what this is. Um, Here you go. So Pam's highlighting. If if you just uh, take a look at that. Um, I don't know if you get, can everyone see that, or let's make it a little bigger. Um, bigger. So if, if you're upgraded from Drupal 5 and Views 1, um, you'll need to convert your, your views manually, um, and it gives you a, a little conversion tool. Um, if your Drupal 5 site, depending upon how you built those views, um, that convert might do nothing, just so you're aware of that. I, I've, when I did my first upgrade, I was like, cool, there's a conversion tool. I went to the conversion tool, converted my tools. They were useless. My views were useless. I pretty much had to rebuild them from scratch. Um, so it's, it's not apparent, you know, and he doesn't say that anywhere, but there's a nice little note in the readme. So depending upon the modules you're upgrading, you might want to take a look at that. Uh, if there's an upgrade.txt, if there's a readme, do a search maybe um, uh, on Drupal.org to see if people have had problems upgrading the module. Um, just things to consider. But so we're going to go ahead and um, we're going to start and upgrade our CCK uh, module just so that we can start 
show you guys what it would be like. You know, upgrade core. We got core up and running. Let's upgrade some some pretty important modules. You know, views and CCK pretty much standard um, for any uh, Drupal site. So same thing. Uh, the files are no longer useful. Um, we've turned the module off, so we're going to go ahead and delete um, all the CC, the CCK folder. We're going to get it off. Um, it deleted entirely. And then once we delete it entirely, we're going to upload the um, the new version, the Drupal 6 version. Okay. And then at this point, it varies. Some modules will need you to run the update.php. Some will need to be turned on. Um, and, and so this is where it's, it's not a, a one case solves all. It depends on how the module is written. It depends on how the upgrade process um, works. So here we're going to we're going to upgrade dot or um, update dot php. Um, you'll see we have some upgrades that need to to be run. We'll go ahead and uh, update. And now we see we have some that failed. Notice we didn't get a PHP error. We just had some some failures for some up, updates. Um, so here's a case where you don't run the update. Uh, .php first, you have to turn the module on. So here we go to uh, the admin page, we go to the modules page, and we turn on um, CCK, and then we run the upgrade again. And like I said, this varies from module to module, so definitely read the documentation. Um, there is no one way to do this. Um, and like I said, these are from our experiences doing this um, a handful of times. So, you know, so, you know text, uh, number, you know, basic things you need. Um, yeah. And, and if you saw uh, Pam turn on, it, we were running the new Drupal 6 version, but now um, let's go and run the update.php um, because most likely um, those upgrades, like we saw, they need to be run. Right. Yeah. So let's go ahead and um, run that. And here, you notice we don't see the failed anymore. It actually ran. Um, it needed that module to be turned on to run. And like I said, not all modules need that. It varies. So definitely uh, check the notes. Um, and then you run this through that process for each module, right? You, you do the same with views. Um, I don't know if you want to do views. We'll, we'll go ahead and do views. Um, you know, like I said, I don't know what all modules you guys are running, but you have to run through this process. And it's, it's a pain, right? You could do it all in one step, one follow swoop. You can just dump all your modules. That's a bad idea because if there's an error and it happens, you won't know what. I mean, you could you have to dive through the logs and find out what happened. So this is a kind of a time-intensive process, but I found that it's in the long run it, it's, it's the best way to go because you can see right your CCK had a problem. All right, what happened? What do I need to do? Um, and and you have a backup. So if you wanted to, you could drop the database and run this whole thing again. Um, so this is views we ran update.php. So this just shows some caching already existed, some caching table. Yeah. I think so. So I mean, you could go to cache. Or? Yeah. So you could have. Uh, so the, I know that you guys you basically took your existing folder and you, you know, you copied Drupal six over. You could uh, could have just as easily taken Drupal six folder um, and then started adding module DB two to the site's modules folder. Go with that method, like taking a reference to the old database, or like, you know, like a copy of the old database. I don't know if that. So what you're saying is you would have the um, a Drupal six site with all the modules you needed, and then you try and access the old database. Yeah, right. Yeah. Oh well, yeah. You wouldn't you would turn them on like you're doing, but yeah, you would access the old database. Well, a copy of the old database. I mean, you could you could do that. I don't, I don't know. I like working in this way because if you just copied them all over. I don't know if that would present a different problem. I've, I've never done it that way, so I, it's hard for me to, to say whether that, I can't think of any issues, can't think of anything. I just, I've never, this has always been the step that I follow just because it's been my workflow and it, it, it worked once and I said, great, I have a process for doing upgrades. This worked for me, I'm gonna try and do it again and you know, I just kind of add more and more to my toolkit. Oh, I was just, uh, I'm just wondering if, uh, I'm trying to, I guess what it is, I'm trying to wrap my head around exactly, or you know, like the approach you're taking Copying over the Drupal 6 versions of the modules. 
I think if you did that, your, your database structure is different from core five to six, and I think you'd run into problems, personally, with that approach. Because even though you have a copy of your five, and you're working off six files, it's going to be accessing tables that may or may not exist. And I think that approach, you're going to have a lot of SQL errors, um, you're going to have a lot of PHP errors, and then it's from there, it's you have the errors now, and it's like, how do I fix them? What, what do I need to turn off? What do I need to turn on? What do I need to update? Um, where this approach is, all right, we're updating core, step one, we're updating CCK, and we update the database, we update the files, and we update CCK, and we update the database, we update views, and we update the database. So it's kind of more linear rather than, this is all updated, um, now I have to update the database. So, so I guess maybe I missed, one, I missed one critical thing at the very beginning when you were copying over the Drupal 6 files into the Drupal 5 installation. Mm -hmm. um, the upgrade, the upgrade PHP, yeah. is that the one? So that's the one, you, you, you move the Drupal 6 upgrade PHP over to the 5 folder, yeah. and that's the one you run, and it goes out and looks and sees, oh, this is a Drupal 5 installation, and it starts doing its comparisons. Yep. Yes. Yeah. And I think that that's the key thing. So when, I don't know if you, if you did miss that, we had our Drupal 5 site, we deleted everything but the sites folder, which has your, your uh, database um, configuration information, your modules, your theme stuff, and then we deleted that. And any, if, if you have a custom files directory, we left that intact too. But we deleted everything else, and then we have a fresh install of, of Drupal 6, the latest version, and then we just dumped those files um, into, you know, it'd be your web server. In, in this case, it's just our local development site. Um, so yeah, and then from there, we start upgrading. Rather than your approach where you have the files living somewhere else, you have them all six, and then you're trying to access that old Drupal 5 database. I think that's the approach you were trying to take. Yeah, well, because you said you moved everything, everything over from Drupal 6 except the sites folder, right? Yeah, so and... I was just thinking the vice versa of having the Drupal 6 installation oh. on the sites oh, okay. folder. I guess it's the same. Is it the same, right? I mean, it's it is. Online. Except I think, like, I think we're trying to like update the modules one by one. It's easier to do that. And, like, if, if you're just dumping all your existing stuff into the the new sites folder, I think it's just easier to copy them like one by one, just to make sure it's. But, it, but just, I'm correct in copying yeah. from the I mean, it's, yeah. over and set the sites, including all of the you know update PHP and everything that's in the room. Yeah. Right? Yeah. Okay. 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 Yeah, go when, when you're doing an upgrade and, and why you separate it that way is when, when you, it, it's going to go through the, uh, the upgrade to the install scripts of the modules to figure out any schema changes. And, and oh, so you need the old modules. So you, well, no, you, the new ones <coughs> have, have the, uh, the install scripts, which the upgrade uh, PHP uh, will, will check for um, differences. So, so it's basically, like, is it looking at the system's uh, um, table or something and going, this is what's currently installed in this data company on this build? This is what's yeah, I think it's that as well as the .info file uh, yeah. for the module. So it checks, it checks the differences of version. Of version. Um, oh, I interesting. So you have the old, you actually have the old Drupal 5 module, whatever it is. You've got the old data in your system. Yeah, okay. it's the old database tables that haven't been updated and then like Mike was saying, you have the new Drupal 6 files. It sees those old tables. It's, it, it knows that it needs to be updated or the schema change, and, and it needs to apply those, and it does that. Right. Um, and then I guess the, the downside of if you did it all in one file swoop and it upgrades and things weren't upgraded in, in, a, in the proper process, right? If you upgraded core and something in this module needed core to be updated before it updated and it threw an error, um, you could mash the whole up, update. Yeah, no, I understand the yeah. need to turn yeah. everything off. Yeah. And then yeah. So, but yeah. Yeah, and, and that's that's the real risk. Is if, if you go in the wrong order, is ultimately your database will not be upgraded correctly, and, and the data can't be migrated correctly. Yeah. And, and if you end up with something halfway, good luck uh, backing out to where you were, uh, unless you've got again you're supposed to have a good backup. Um, but, but then you have to figure out the right order. Um, it, it, it really comes down to how many contributed modules you have, and if, if there were really any database changes. If, if there weren't in the contributed modules, you, you don't need to, to necessarily turn them all off. It is a good practice, um, and that's, that's what they're controlling. I mean, that's, that's basically how it goes. But, um, 
Yeah. Uh, yeah. I, don't, I don't want to take over. No, no, no. no that's okay. Uh, no, that's great input. Um, what Mike said is, is definitely really valid. Like I said, and anyone who has experience doing this knows that you can always add your two cents. Like, like I said, we're just sharing a, what a, a process that has worked for us. Um, you could use other ones. We just feel that, that our process has worked, you know, I think seven or eight times. So we're, we're keeping <laughs> with it. We're trying to refine it. It wasn't that I was trying to. Oh, no, 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 no. You know, like I'd rather do it this way. I was trying to understand fully. Sure. So right. is it the same thing? Sure. Copying the sites full over versus copying this over. So it's the same thing. Yeah. Uh, one thing, I'm neurotic, so for some of my upgrades, um, I'll do snapshots of the database. So let's say I get CCK and views running. I'm doing a dump right there because then I have a restore point, right? If, if I kill something, like Mike said, if I do something irreversible, some damage, then I'm back to my Drupal 5 site and my dump um, of the database. Um, so I, I do, um, with one upgrade, I did view CCK and some other like scheduler module, um, and the image module did not play well and it destroyed everything and I had to drop those tables but I had done a snapshot of the database when I did CCK and views so then I could restore that and try again um, and that just upgrading that module itself was like a day worth of time um, running through. Wrong um, or, no it was the image module oh. um, I, you know it's one thing where you know I, I installed it um, I ran the update I had to turn things on I ran the update again and it, it was one of those things you need to run it multiple times. And there's some modules that require it to be run multiple times. So Basically. you don't give you errors and you just run it again and then it's fine. Yeah. 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 But you know, it, it's not always explicit, so you don't always know that. Yeah. You just go back and you run it and it says, oh, there's another upgrade. Oh, okay, it sees that, it does that, and then your errors go away. But like I said, there's no real fail stuff way. If, you, if it throws an error, um, you can kind of look and compare the lines of code and, and see if you can figure out what's going on. Like I said, the, the one issue where I left the caching on, um, I looked theme ink, I went to the that folder, I looked went to that line and I saw it had something to do with caching. I went to the performance and saw that like a dummy I left the caching on, so I cleared that and it went away, luckily. But um, and there was no more errors, I checked the logs. I'm a real big fan of checking the logs periodically. Checked the logs, there was no more errors, and I ran a cron, the cron ran, I looked at some pages, no more PHP errors, so I pretty much concluded that that was the issue and, and that was solved. Um, so definitely. Well, I updated, I think, the date module the other day, and I had, um, this wasn't from 5 to 6, it was like s upgrading to the latest version of date. And I'd skipped some versions, and that caused some problems, but um, what I had to do is I, I searched the forums. Like, there wasn't any, like, commit, official commit for the, uh, the date module, but someone had said, oh, here's the thing, the, the table name has changed, so if you change this line to this line. And, I mean, no one had, like, checked that into CVS or anything, so you just have to, like, search and see if, someone has had the issues that you had. And chances are they have, so. Yeah, that, 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 that's, that's a good point. And what it comes down to is some of the contributor modules might work fine, but their upgrade scripts don't. Uh, <laughs> yeah. So they basically, you know, unless a lot of people have given feedback in some of the modules that just don't, they, they go, oops, I figured out how to fix it and, and, and fix it. Uh, the contributor modules were not tested upgrades nearly to the extent that you would have before. Because they're, they're hand coded, it's not like there's, some, there's not some way to auto generate an upgrade file. No, it's all, it's all, yeah, exactly. It, it's, so every time you have a change, a schema change, you have to figure out, okay, how's that affecting my data that already exists and how do I get that to move forward? Um, which is what happens when you, you know, you've got different kinds of normalization that you might say, hey, I need to get it. Yeah, and pretty, and that, that pretty much sums it up. There's, it's, it's, I can't go over every scenario, and like I said, I, I've upgraded a handful of sites, and I'm still learning stuff like, like the caching thing, or, or like what, what um, Pam said. I think we were talking about it at work, and then I was like, oh, I, I have no clue. We ran the upgrade; everything should have worked. You know, she mm -hmm. searched the the forums, and oh, bam, someone had the same problem, and she she found a fix. So. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, error message. <laughs> yeah. um, if you want to, if you guys, anybody in here is interested, I know that uh, Ashok, VT uh, Nash is, is his uh, online name. He, he just moved to LA from Toronto a couple months ago, but he's uh, really, he's working at CalArts, he's, he's a really good developer. He's going to talk about how he upgraded the Zimmer Twins, which was from Drupal 4.6 oh, uh, all the way to I think it's five or six. I think it's version six. Um, 
in 4.6 has to go to 4.7, which has to go to 5, which then has to go to 6. Can you? Yeah. And, 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 and the way you upgrade has changed since 4.6. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. I think it was 5. Was 5 or 4.7 is where they came out with the update. PHP got a lot nicer mm -hmm. um, in terms of how, how this stuff worked. Yeah, I remember that. Um, when, and, and can you actually jump from just five to six, or do you have to go through all the upgrades in five? You, you should be on the latest version. So you can jump right to the latest version of five? Yeah, it, it's, it's probably yeah. not going to be quite as important from six to seven, mm -hmm. the way that they're doing it now. Um, it, you'll just have to run updates a couple times. It, the, the way things are done now is, is they're trying to weigh it a little bit better in terms of understanding because the database has to change in certain ways before you can run other SQL against it. And so certain upgrades have to happen first. Right. Um, and that, that's where it's weird with contributed modules is sometimes you have dependencies. Mm -hmm. And it's those dependencies, things have to be just to upgraded in the right order. And my understanding is it's gotten a, a, a lot better. I haven't actually got, got into the code, but I, I just hear the way that things are weighted. That's <laughs> no, cool. Like I said, any any other input, like I said, um, outside is great. Do you ever have any problems going from like 5.1 to 5.0 latest version of 5? Have you ever had that? You know, I keep up, um, and I'm actually a part of the upgrade team at, at Urban Insight, so I, I keep up to date. So when I do jumps, it's not a huge jump. It's not like from 5.2 to, to, to whatever version of 5 now. Right. And I think you run into problems there. So it's always a good practice to be kind of up to date. Yeah. Um, I have done like a 5.6 to whatever it is, like 5.19 five, five five or whatever it is. Um, You've done that? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So you can definitely do those big jumps, but I'd be worried doing like a 5.2 to 5.19 to 5, you know, without yeah. thoroughly checking to make sure that something, yeah. everything is working fine. Um, yeah. We can do those. But yeah, definitely you need to jump from 4 to 5 to 5 to 6. You can't just go, I'm going to go from 4 to 7 and do a straight to 6. Um, I saw that in the forum post. Um, people tried to do that, and, and I had to be like, no, don't. That's a really bad idea. Um, okay. So I, I guess we're running short on time, so we want to show how to. Um, well, first I want to point out oh, that yeah. we had that error on this page before with the views or whatever. But um, if you just go back to the update.php, you'll see that there's no um, errors or there's no pending updates or anything. So it, it's fine. So like, if you if you see an error, don't necessarily freak out right away. Take a look at what it's doing, and, and uh, like you mentioned, uh, you know, go online, Google it, um, search the forums. Um, you'll definitely find um, something you're looking for. And like I said, right now, you know, Drupal five, uh, you know, Drupal six has been out for quite a bit. So people have, have upgraded and, and definitely learned from their lessons. Uh, definitely learned from us um, about things that we, we could have done better. I think Pam was going to talk about the coder module. Yeah, really quick. Um, does a coder module? So if there's a module that, um, that isn't necessarily out that you need, or if you have a custom module, um, there's, oh, coder, yeah. yeah, there's a module called coder. Yeah, you can use that for your own modules, right? Yeah, for yeah, custom yeah, modules. Yeah, and, and Pam's actually worked with it, so she knows a little bit more about it. Um, I mean, it's pretty uh, straightforward. Okay, so these are my download. Coder. Looks like I already downloaded. Okay, so you just turn the coder module on, and then on your admin listing page, um, say that, like I don't have any custom modules on this one, but say you needed um, Devel for some reason and it wasn't already at six, you could hit, you have this new link called code review, so you <laughs> click that. <laughs> um, so you go to your selection form and then you can check however many of these but you want, but the one we're interested in is converting five, from five to six. So we'll go through your dot module file. And actually, I think it can. Oh, this is probably really good for module developers who want to contribute. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Ooh. So, so we'll select specific modules. Um, which one are we doing again? Devel. Yeah, Okay. 
Sorry? The, the quarter, using the quarter module to upgrade to show, a, like a custom module or module that hasn't been upgraded? Yeah. So it'll show you exactly what line in your devel.module, oh, it, it changed, you know, translation is different. And then it'll give you a link on what the, um, oh, here's, here's the rule, translations are looked for in dot translation. So you can read this, and then it tells you what exactly in your dot module file and exactly which line. Uh, line oh, line negative one. Oh, <laughs> I don't well, know I about think that. that means it's miss is that line is removed or? Or it's missing or missing, something? Yeah. Maybe you need another line or something. Taking yeah, taken out. Yeah. Taken out. So, okay. But I think you mentioned about like, you know, the things that have changed and definitely use this module to see, um, you know, what, what things are different from yeah, Drupal right. 5 to 6. So, so you wouldn't do this for, yeah. like, the Vel, there's a, there's a version 6 out, but for all your custom stuff, this, like, the coder module, you'll definitely, like, run through and it'll give you, you know, line 50. You need to change this, like, 51, you know. And then it gives you uh, a link on what exactly has changed and how to upgrade. Uh, like it's your menu system. The menu system has changed from five to six. So um, that's a really good uh, module to use when upgrading, I think. Yeah. I think one thing we want to show right before we kind of just take questions and, and kind of wrap up is uh, we want to show converting a, a, a Drupal 5 theme to six real quick. Oh. Um, so for one, in, one upgrade I did, um, I just canned the theme and just download a Drupal 6 theme and turn it on. That's a real easy way. Um, obviously, that might not work for you if you have branding and you have your website, you know, has a history. You can't just do that, right? So you might have to take an existing theme that you've already created um, and actually upgrade it to um, five. Um, and if you notice, we were running like uh, Lemon Twist, the Lemon Twist theme. Um, and now if you if we go to our, um, our themes administration page, you, you can't find that theme. And, and the reason you can't find the theme is because from Drupal 5 to 6, um, theme, uh, themes now have info files. So now Drupal 6 doesn't see a, a theme. So um, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to get on here and show you how to upgrade. It's really, it's not too bad. So let me twist. Yeah, let me twist. Um, so what you can do. Um, it, it, this, is the, yeah. this is the site directory. Yeah, sure. But, uh, um, if you know about info files, you can go ahead and, um, is this a Drupal 5 or 6? Six, six? Uh, I mean, this is 6. I don't right. have a 5 anymore. We upgraded it. <laughs> so what you can do, like I said, if you know info files, you can build an info file. Um, if you're lazy like me, you can just copy one. Um, where, where, this is push button. Push, push button. Uh, so you're grabbing existing Drupal 6 info file? Yep. Yep, boy. I mean, you don't, I mean, you don't have to do it this way. Um, I do that because, like I said, I'm Will not. Will um, that, I, I, that That's a question for Pam, I think. Oh, I don't know. <laughs> that's not a question for Pam. Pam. <laughs> <laughs> um, I guess we can run the, I don't know. All right, so you pretty much just copy the info file from something else. If you know how to build an info file, it's really easy. You just, uh, you know, you just. It's exactly similar. So um, let me just go ahead and open it. Uh, yeah. All right. So obviously we're not running push button. So we just go ahead and dump this. Um, we I'm can. Make the text bigger, I think. Oh, sorry about that. Anyone know how to the shortcut for increasing size on a text wrangler? Text wrangler? Command plus? Let's try that. Uh, I think it's in preferences under text wrangler. Yeah, command plus. Yeah. 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 Go to view fonts. Go, go back to view font. Text. text. I mean. Show fonts. No. What? Click show fonts. And then, yeah. Oh. Uh. I think it's still stayed. Mm. Select everything. Select everything. There it goes. All right, cool. So great. So yeah, you can dump this. Um, like this is packaging information from when you download. Uh, 
so you don't need it, but if you want. Um, so, you know, we changed, we got rid of that. Um, slide it over. Slide the whole thing? Yeah. Like that. So, yeah, so you can add your description. So, this is. So yeah, so you know, besides the text issues, um, you, you just copy an info file, you rename it custom, um, you put your description, and this is pretty standard stuff. Um, you have a regions. Now, before you define regions in your uh, um, in your template.php, now they're defined in the in the info file. Uh, no, it's it's just a different way of. Um, I actually didn't build that many Drupal five themes. I just know how to um, convert them over. So left, and, and and I'll show you where these regions are. Is this what we normally find in the template style? Uh, in your template.php in Drupal five, yeah. So th that's one thing to consider if your uh, Drupal five theme, your template.php file is huge. Um, this process might not be as clean uh, as it should be. Um, by default, I think it's the uh, left, right, um, and footer um, regions are defined for you. But just to show you kind of how, I guess, easy this is, let's do, what to see. I'm not 100% familiar with this theme, so we're going to, oh, we're going to see where this comes into play. Right, so you save that. Um, go into, where's the thing? Um, you own your page.tpl. And for all those regions that I just created, okay. yeah. um, go back to this thing in text. Try 14. You know, this is pretty standard stuff. The, the logo didn't change, the site name didn't change, but um, this sidebar right, um, this is, I defined in the, in the uh, info file as a region, and I just defined it as right, and that was what I put in the bracket. I put right. So does that mean later on when you're um, doing content, like you're maybe adding a block or something, and you actually want to put it, it'll show the left, right? It'll show that on the, the blocks, uh, the admin build blocks page, you know, when you pick where do you want to put it in the header, in the, in the sidebar? Um, so this is how you could, you know, create an info file, edit your uh, page at tpl.php, and um, and add those regions. And actually, those are only two regions that were there, so or just one, right? Content. Yeah, and I have to update the um, one thing that changed from uh, from five to six was the the way that HTML tag was output. Um, I think it's for better translation. So once again, I mean, you, you can do this. Um, you can hand code it. Um, like I said, I'll just copy because I just copy paste. That's easier for me than to write everything. Um, so I should just copy the from the doc type to the head. Um, and then I'll close this one. And from the doc type to the head, paste a new one. You save this. So now you have info file, you have the regions printing out where you need to in your page.tpl.php. Uh, there's one thing you need to do. If you have a template.php, um, you need to dump the stuff in here. Um, and we'll, we'll, um, we'll get to that in a sec. Um, I just want to show you that we, we now have a Drupal 16. Can you comment that out? Instead of, I mean, you just comment out. Yeah, you can comment it out. I mean, you have a, you have a dump. Um, I, I mean, if you're doing this fast, like if you're doing it really on production, you really want to get the site back up. Um, you can reference your Drupal 5 uh, template.php that you took um, later. Um, I'm, like I said, I'm just doing this now for, for speed because um, we got another presenter starting here. We don't want to hold them up. Uh, so, yeah, so now you see that I, I have a custom theme. Uh, it's now Drupal 6.13 uh, compatible. 
Uh, we turn it on. Um, hopefully, it should look like what we started with. And, and now we're up. Um, granted, our overrides aren't there anymore, but it, it really didn't take that long to create a Drupal 6 theme. We just added the new regions. We, we had an info file, the regions. We updated the page, uh, .tpl.php, and then we removed um, some of the customizations in the template.php. Um, Pam has a little bit more experience with um, working with overrides in the template.php. The reason we deleted the stuff from the template.php, if the function calls are different or if there is, uh, can you think of other, other issues? Um, just the way regions are defined, they're not defined in the template.php. If you have those, that, that code in your template.php, it'll throw an error in your site. You might get a white screen or depending upon how you have PHP errors configured. Um, so when you set up those right, left, and whatever in the info file, was, um, were you following a convention that's already in, um, in Drupal 6 or something? Like yeah. In other words, like they already have left and right and you were just assuring that it matches? Yeah, but by default, um, I think it's left, right, header, footer. Our, our region is defined. If you open up your Garland uh, info file, you'll see nothing. But those are provided by Drupal default. And you'll see if you open up garland.tpl.php, uh, you'll see right, left, content. And, and so it, those are just defined automatically. I think content. And so if I created like a region called foo, um, and then my one in it, like said if foo, echo foo, or whatever, you have the mm -hmm. template file, or the uh, Mm -hmm. Does that, when I go to select a block view or where I want to show a block or something like that, would it give me an option called foo? Yeah. 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 So, so here you see that I have left, right, header, footer, um, and these I defined in that info file as regions. Um, so, yeah, if you wanted to create another section, like you wanted to have a, a banner, you would create, you know, just uh, in your info file, you'd create another region called banner. You know, you write, put the HTML, I'll put that variable where it's supposed to be, um, clear your cache, um, and then if you come back here, you'll see a new um, region did, called... Did um, you need to go to a special, specifically to find those regions, left, right, footer, header, and you're in, or were you just showing you I would, could? I would just show you could. So you could delete that and you would still get left, right, header, footer here? Yeah, because okay. there's some regions that are defined by default, and that's, I, I'm not sure, all of them I think it's left, right, header, footer. Um, so if you didn't put those regions, I just put those in, in there to show, illustrate that this is where you define them in the, in the info file and that's where you output them in, in your um, page.tpl.php. Then we want to cover one quick thing, um, just some resources. No, Pam, uh, um, no, we'll just put like we have that checklist that we were kind of working off of um, for all the steps that we took. So we'll put that up on this session page and then also there's like, there's a good converting 5x themes to 6 and converting 5x modules. Um, to you six. Well, well, this is a like a Drupal doc right now, so I'll post it on the yeah. session, right. um, and then that has links at the bottom to those two resources. Yeah. So, so we'll, okay. we'll get those up uh, tonight yeah. um, for you guys. So yeah, because I, I know it's a lot to cover, and I'm not. You guys are just trying to follow along, not necessarily trying to take notes. So uh, we have the checklist, um, and feel feel free to incorporate that, incorporate that into your upgrade process. But uh, that's all we got. So.